All right, folks, welcome to the barbershop. This is the uh, center of the Copenhagen, uh, Midtown. We have uh, Little Mermaid somewhere in that direction, not that far away. And uh, this is basically the gallery that you see from outside. Uh, we're gonna move in just in a second. Check a lot of the window frames where a lot of tourists, they stop up usually and uh, take shit loads of pictures, especially the Asians, you know how it goes. Big Canon cameras, always uh, firing off in our face while we're standing and doing our job in there. <laughs> Anyways, let's go inside because it's kind of cold here. As I can sense on my hands, not many degrees outside. All right. And here is the entrance. It might look a little bit hectic. Just close the door behind you here. But most of this equipment goes outside when we are open. So we have our sign that we uh, put out, self-made, homemade, just as uh, so many, most of the things that the barbershops are. And um, bicycle stand with a barber tray that goes out as well. This piece of equipment is, um, has uh, actually uh, two purposes. First of all, it's a handicap ramp that we can put on the, at the ladders so we can get disabled people in the house as well. And the other thing it is good for is getting out this baby when it goes out for the ride, all right? Hence the barber biker, whenever we need to go do the service somewhere, jump on the bike, mostly summertime, that's when it's good. At least when there is no, no snow and no rain, that'll be awesome. That's when the rides are good. A couple of benches go out as well. And then this area gets a little bit more spacious for people to come and sit when they walk in. Uh, for us to make a delicious cup of coffee for our visiting guests. And um, what else can I say about this place? Not much. This piece of equipment we have in the corner it was actually built in stove or a fireplace um, works functional we fire it up once in a while especially uh, winter time it gets kind of cozy and then when people are finished and done uh, got their haircuts they can just check themselves out before they go out and do some damage right besides that not much to say here all nice and cozy. We're gonna move inside the barbershop straight ahead. Follow me in. Into the light room. Now the lights here are like surgical, man. It was uh, tested and uh, retested several times. We tried, experimented with different kind of lights, but ended up with these LED panels. Uh, they're not totally fixated the way they have to be. We're still trying out some different positions. Basically, it's a game of shadow elimination so you know, so you can actually see all the angles and clear cuts so we don't want to have any shadows while we're working so it goes kind of p-shape around the chair so when we work with the with the guest from each and every side no shadows clear cuts and nice haircuts um right so in the beginning and not as far as uh, the dinosaurs, uh, we built this part of the barbershop, the, the three stations. That was the first thing that was kind of built. And it's all self-made, handmade. Uh, design kind of came along. The one thing I did know is uh, how I wanted to make the topping, the top of the barbershop. I kind of checked out a lot of woodwork on YouTube, on Pinterest, on Google. Just got myself uh, tons of inspiration, like visual inspiration and then started figuring around what kind of products, what kind of materials I can get my hand on, what tools do I have to work with them, and you know, how much creativity I can manage. So this is what came out. Basically, it's um, uh, rings of uh, chopped wood that uh, we were sliced and cut, neatly arranged in a pattern glued to, uh, to a board and then the fillings are made with uh, granite actually like uh, granite sand and then mixed with epoxy everything was filled up and a couple of layers on top so they came out really nice and it's hard as a rock I mean uh, if you can stand and jump on it nothing happens 
Um, the good thing about it, it's easy to clean, nice to maintain, doesn't take too much. Uh, everything else was made with the sandalwood tree, the cupboards for appliances and what else we uh, have. And then the mirrors. Now the beams came out really nice. Uh, wasn't intentional to begin with. And the thing is that I ordered up three mirrors. Uh, there are actually three separate mirrors. They go from the counter of the table to the top. But um, since we are in an ancient building, Copenhagen is in the center of the Copenhagen is, a, is an old, old ancient city, old building. Way back. And uh, the house is kind of on a preservation heritage status. Uh, so the walls are kind of off, all right? So I couldn't really fit the, the mirrors in. They would kind of wobble out. So then I figured that I might as well just park something heavy in front of them, keep them in place. And it worked out better than I thought. Um, fixed up a couple of lamps on it. Functions perfectly. All right, so. The stations there consists of the, the board that you see, the, the working space, the mirrors, and then last but not least, and actually what took most of the time, were these sinks uh, that originally uh, were just a wooden barrel used for planting the pots or you know, trees, whatever, for gardening. And I decided to give them a little um, waterproof coating inside, uh, as you would do if you were making a bathroom, like a shower place, um, put some tiles inside of them, fix the water and plug it all up. So um, there's some tubing, there's some piping going around. Uh, that takes a little bit of know-how and it's a good thing to either ask somebody who knows how or figure out know-how because that can cause you a lot of damage if, <laughs> if that doesn't work as it should. All right. Enough said about the counter, we're gonna move anti-clockwise this way. Um, the shelf here was actually uh, found on um, Facebook Marketplace as well, where I poached a lot of, uh, lot of the material and a lot of uh, furniture. Uh, some of it we use it as it is, some of it we uh, damage and uh, refurbish, uh, make something else out of it. But it's a nice place to get stuff uh, that is Still have a lot of use, but you know, you can get it for chips and um, be creative with it. Put some value in it. <laughs> so this one is comes to the top is one piece, and then there are three pieces as well. All the products that we have on the shelves, uh, we choose the good stuff. You know, I, I try not to save anything on the on the products. I basically go for the quality because however you like it, it's gonna last you longer. And, it's it's a better it's a better game if you ask me to go for the quality products rather than quantity products. But anyways, um, this little piece of equipment is uh, actually a microwave, and uh, not because we are preparing chicken or anything else here in the shop. But once upon a time that I was in Portugal, I figured out the, I found out that the guys who, when they do the shaves, they actually use microwave there to heat up the towels. So you just wet the towel, put it in the microwave, two minutes, you got a steaming hot towel um, and it's just fast. I tried some of the towel heaters, works fine. You know, you put the, the towels inside in the beginning of the day, use them throughout the day, but then sometimes you need more than you had in it because we have five guys, five chairs, sometimes all of them are full. Uh, if two, three guys are using a couple of towels each, that's it. Uh, the towel heater is emptied out and then it takes time to heat some new ones. In this case, we only hit the ones we need. It takes no time. It's kind of incorporated into the process and um, functions fantastically well. And you don't have something working all day, entire day, uh, but only when you need. Moving along over here, uh, if we take the stations as, uh, as we go along here. Now this station is the last one I made actually. First the counter was built, then the middle station was built. Um, actually around or from behind of the coffee uh, coffee machine uh, um, but yeah it was a piece of furniture that we kind of uh, put the sink on top on top of oh, man. Uh, made it function 
and then the mirror was purchased separately as well um, i don't know which flea market i found on that one on but uh, it fitted in into the inventory so fitted in with this counter so when this came along last but not least that one uh, was made they are kind of similar similar design but were bought totally separately and the mirrors as well found in totally different places totally uh, but but they kind of match so that's what i like about it make it consistent through all all right in the middle when you look uh, that's uh, our barrel <laughs> one split barrel beer stand usually we have two three taps going uh, with some beer we always have one beverage included in our services so people can choose a drama whiskey or a beer and um, this baby makes a lot of people happy uh, we have sometimes um, People that come in for a bachelor party, um, you know, wedding preparation, after work, after schedule kind of meetings. Um, so it's kind of cozy when guys get together, have a couple of beers, sit, groom themselves, and then the party continues. Um, what else? The coat hanger is actually made out of some pallet frames that were parked outside our entrance just on the pavement somebody unloaded uh, some sort of a shipment and just left it over there first i got pissed that somebody left their you know leftovers in front and then i thought hell let's uh, well, let's use it for something so i just got hold of the, of the hooks over here we burned it off uh, gave it a little bit of lack and uh, whoop de doo made a little fashionable coat hanger out of it right I think we've been around the barbershop quite um, all the way around. What else is there to see? The glass hangers up here also made out of uh, wine boxes. Uh, just read it a little bit, made it functional. So that's how it looks in here. Right, so we went through outside, we came into the entrance. This is the barbershop and now we're gonna move into the the prohibition bar so the idea of entire venue was uh, based on an idea that was cooking up for 10 15 years prior to ourselves opening here um, i had the idea of having a like an old school prohibition bar with a cocktail bar uh, but uh, it, it seemed kind of ridiculous at the moment nobody believed in it uh, and then when we decided actually to find a bar place where we wanted to establish a bar we found this venue and the idea adapted itself to the venue rather than venue to the idea um, because the way the rooms are divided the way there are some back rooms as well that probably not gonna go into them uh, at the moment but the functionality of the venue basically made it possible for the old old idea to come alive all right, so Prohibition Bar, we have the barbershop as a front and the bar is secluded uh, behind the scenes, not that visible from outside. This is where we have all the good whiskey. The latecomer of them all is actually our, our own whiskey we got with our own logo. Very proud of this baby. A wonderful, wonderful 18 year old single barrel blend and mold stuff from Scotland. Uh, chosen and handpicked by uh, merci beaucoup moi um, but it, it's really good a lot of people appreciate it and besides that we have around 180 varieties of different whiskey right now worldwide uh, we have some gins we got some rums for those who like that we do some whiskey tasting rum tasting gin tastings obviously that's also a possibility bachelor parties birthdays um, just company gatherings friday bars anything it, it's it's not that big cozy place we also put some extra tables and chairs in the middle when it gets a little bit more crowded piano came in as well um, um when i found it it was presented a heavy duty piano old school but um, i had some couple of strong buff friends who um, picked it up and brought it down the stairs 
I don't know how the hell they manage, but um, heads off, man. I will probably break my back trying to do that, but they managed to do it. And it fits the place perfectly as well. And whoever knows how to play our guests, they can have a sit and give us a little demonstration on their skills. Really nice. Um, over here, we obviously have a station where we do the rebooking payments. A um, little bit of planning. Also plays the music. Behind the curtains here in the door is uh, dungeons. No, there's actually nothing there. It's just um, our electrical fuses and the music equipment, everything that plays the surround sound uh, in, in the shop and in the bar. That equipment stashed in there. So not much to see, not much to brag about. Right, what else? The counter, the bar itself, um, that was created as the first piece of uh, furniture in the barbershop, because we basically took over a an empty basement. There was not much in it. It was flooded uh, some years ago prior to us taking over. There was some business in here that, um, I don't know, that we're doing in beauty cleaning or something like that, but that went bye-bye. Uh, and when we took over the place, it was kind of, you know, it wasn't looking that nice. But the floors went down, the tiles we put down, uh, both in bar, barbershop, entrance, all over new floors and then on top of that came the bar that is made out of the same material as the barbershop counter the, the long one with three stations after the same principles um, sandalwood tree a thick wooden uh, kitchen top actually that was sliced up that uh, serves as a, a top uh, behind it is actually um, Everything is metallical, uh, so it's easy to clean, easy to maintain. So serves perfectly. And dishwasher, refrigerator, all the bar equipment is behind the scenes. Invisible for the guests. What else is there to say? Now the back bar that we kind of changed like a couple of times, two or three times. We 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 changed the bar back in order to make more space for more bottles. Uh, and the last one came out uh, easiest, uh, but the cutest, I would say. All made out of the used wine boxes, a couple of mirrors, uh, second hand, LED strips, and some Christmas lights behind the, the, the boxes, just those small LEDs, evenly divided more or less. And voila, you have um, a nice bar bag. The entire motive and why I started this barbershop in this kind of combination uh, came along the way when um, still young or younger and working a lot in the bars, discotheques, coffee shops and places uh, where there were a lot of people, a lot of parties. Uh, I like the vibe, I like that um, environment. Um, then we had a bar that was a seasonal bar uh, as well um, on, on the beach side here in Denmark, but the seasons are not that well in Denmark, so that was a shifty business. <laughs> and at the same time, I went uh, to get a haircut, which I wasn't really you know, satisfied with. Um, what are you gonna do? Shit happens. But then I started kind of thinking, okay, well, what was it that they bought the experience that wasn't that pleasurable? And the entire thing from coming into the shop, getting the service, going out there, uh, every step on the way, something was missing, uh, in my opinion. And that kind of got me thinking, okay, okay, what am I doing and, and what was my experience in the barbershop? And I thought, okay, if we combine those two where I can actually get a decent drink and get a nice uh, experience getting my hair cut uh, and grooming myself because that's kind of, that's a celebration for, uh, for many people, you know, going to look better, feel better, perform better, uh, obviously uh, is a nice thing to do for yourself. So I thought, hey, those two things, they would work together. Um, did share my idea with several people. Some laughed it off. Some thought it was ridiculous. And only years and years after when we were looking for a place to open a bar, found this place and were figuring out what kind of, what kind of concept would work in this place. That idea came back again. I thought, like, okay, let's try it. Let's, let's actually put it to work. See if it works. And it does perfectly. Uh, I don't think it's the newest idea, I probably didn't do anything groundbreaking by it, but uh, at least in the city of the Copenhagen, nothing of the similar exists 
they yet may be already done somewhere or at least something of the same sort. So that's why the whiskey bar uh, or bar with lots of whiskey um, inspired of the prohibition times uh, from the US. That's why we have a Mr. Capone hanging on the wall over there, um, the Scarface and several other pictures that we have around the house from, uh, from the prohibition style. Uh, from back in the days where people spoke easy and um, spoke easy about the bars. And the barbershop itself, um, that uh, became the, the front of, of the bar. Uh, we actually wanted to make the you know, two-seated barbershop where the two chairs would be in the entrance. This would be the main attraction, the bar, and then the lounge where we have the, the, the bar at the moment. But then somehow during the process, things got uh, mixed and matched uh, and we decided to go with this constellation, which I'm actually quite happy about because this became the biggest attraction of, the, of this business actually. And uh, this is the part that makes the most revenue for, for, for the place. And that, the part where, to which people come with a, with a lot of joy. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of bars in Copenhagen. There are many good cocktail bars in Copenhagen. If you ever visit Copenhagen, make sure you go visit some of them. You can always find them on Google Maps. So that was something that is already existing. A good barbershop with a cocktail bar, that was something new. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with um, how it all came out, how it all worked out, and how we're making it work it out. At the moment, we have uh, myself and uh, four other guys uh, working at the barbershop here. Uh, sometimes we have a new barber coming in and an old barber going out. You know, people change. Uh, I'm always happy if we can keep the guys for as long as possible. But, you know, life changes. Uh, that's how it is. You can all check them out on our website, thebarbershop.dk. You will see the profiles of each barber that we have. Um, in the shop at the moment, or our Instagram as well. Uh, the Barbershop Bar, that's what's it called. Our Facebook and Instagram, The Barbershop Bar. Um, that's the name. The clientele that comes here, speaking of our guests, is mostly mature people. We have uh, above average of the age of the guys that come here. Uh, they like the fact that it's uh, more of a mature vibe that is here. There are a lot of uh, local businesses, uh, offices from where the, our guests are coming. Also, a lot of guests from the local um, hotels, the central hotels of the Copenhagen. A lot of tourists uh, that are walking by here, taking pictures, and then the word kind of spreads. So we're quite happy about it. We really like our steady clientele that comes here and we also very much appreciate the people that come to visit city, come to share the joy with us here, um, tell us the stories from their country and it, it creates a really nice dynamic vibe. The barbers that we have are usually somehow uh, unintentionally always the international crew. We have an uh, Argentinian guy, British guy, Icelandic guy, Danish guy. So me, myself, uh, makes match <laughs> between different nations. So there are a lot of languages at the barbershop being used at the same time. Sometimes we got like four languages going on <laughs> between the guests and the barbers. It uh, can be chaotic, but that, that's the juice, man. I, I, that that what gives the place the vibe. The, um, the multicultural thing, it just, I strive with that. I, I really enjoy that time. Concerning the price and uh, the quality, if you are choosing where to um, where to segment your barbershop, uh, you gotta consider several things. I mean, I can only tell you what we decided and why we decided. We are on the pricey side of the of the range. Uh, our prices are on the luxury kind of part, but uh, there are several factors that decide that. First of all, the location. We're very central in the city, so that gives our a little bit higher rent as well to pay, but it also brings in some high-end uh, clientele. Second of all, the idea was not to be uh, draining ourselves while we're doing the, the work, because if 
you're going like 15, 20 minute uh, fast, fast haircuts, you can do a perfect haircut within a half an hour if you're a skilled barber. Should be possible, uh, not a problem. But it's not only about the haircut for us here. Um, what I really wanted to do and what, I, what the vision was to give the clientele experience. So it's like a Disneyland for the gents, you know, uh, that want to come and spin in our carousel here, so to speak. But uh, it's the experience of, of the visit. It's uh, from the moment you walk in, the, you know, the, the time you spend here, a lot of guys are using it as a, a little getaway uh, place from their wives and kids and jobs and uh, what else they have on the mind. Just come in, sit in the chair where they cannot be occupied by anything else than being in their own brains. Can't even operate the phone because they have a hot towel on their face and just enjoying themselves. Um, so that's why we kind of segment ourselves on, on the higher end, but that gives us uh, more steady clients, that gives us more peace for ourselves, uh, more steady kind of work where we are focusing on the detail rather than trying to finish off uh, the service as fast as possible. Um, and people really do appreciate that, that it's not like a factory kind of belt uh, going one client uh, to another, but you actually appreciate the time you spend with, the, with, with your guest. Uh, they do appreciate the, the attention, the service, the, the time they have uh, to enjoy here at the place. Uh, some people even stick around after they had their haircuts done. That's perfect. They come uh, sit in the bar or have an extra cup of coffee if that's what they want. We got the Wi-Fi so they can sit with their laptops, do some office work in a different kind of scene. We also have some of the local guys that just come for the beer. That's perfect. Uh, during the daytime or for the coffee or to have a small meeting in the bar, that's what they want. Some of them have meetings while they are sitting in the chair, just two guys talking business uh, while they're getting their haircuts. And also a lot of network goes into uh, in the place. A lot of networking happens just naturally all by itself. It just became part of the, the venue that it's exchange of uh, contacts, information, and people giving each other, lending each other hands all the time. Now, obviously I have like uh, business cards from a lot of different kind of people. So if I'm in a conversation with a person, um, I can hear that, oh, they need, I don't know, lawyer, accountant, you know, a builder, whatever. I usually have <laughs> some, some of the contacts to, to draw on and, and share the joy with them. Um, and, it's, and it's perfect. I mean, we, I do that consistently as much as I can actually putting the people together. So thank you for uh, coming along for the ride in the barbershop. Uh, thank you for visiting us at least virtually. Uh, we will try to share as much value with you as possible. If there are any questions, if you want to know something, how it was done, why it was done, what was the thought behind it, just write, comment, uh, do put your sign into the feed. Uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. We are going to be doing lots of more videos. That's uh, at least a plan for the future. Do as much as we can and share as much as we can with you guys uh, and girls. So do give us your comments, do give us your criticism, do give us your feedback so we can actually become better at it. But it's always a pleasure to, to hear both things, both the positive and the negative, all works for us. So. Go right ahead. Um, thank you very much again. And I hope to see you physically in the shop or virtually on the next video. Cheers.